Holiday gift shopping season is here and I have been packing my antique mall spaces full of antiques and vintage for collectors and travelers and gift buyers to see this season. I think you'll be amazed how much selection there is and also why the week after Christmas is better than the weeks before. Let's find out. One thing I like to do when I'm in the Northwest is take you all on a tour of my spaces after I get them fixed up because I've been away a while and you folks have been very kind about buying things, so ooh, needed some big repairs. I'm starting at Snohomish Star Center Mall. It is its 40th anniversary. It is the reason that Snohomish became the antique capital of the Northwest, and I am a dealer on the court level in number 125. From Star Center Mall, you look down Glen Avenue towards the downtown. There are another three to 400 antique dealers downtown. There's Antiques Kitty Corner. Okay, well, this is a laundromat, but mainly downtown Snohomish is about antiques and vintage and specialty shops. So I wish I had time to show you more. At some point, I will come back and film more here, but let me show you what I did in my space. Now, because my friend with the vintage clothing behind me is retiring, we have decided to have a 40% off uh, sale in the booth, and we've been having it for a while, I think about a month and a half. It's gone pretty well so far, but reason I'm doing it with her is because I have a lot of stuff that has never seen the light of day that came from estates, that came from consignments, and it is time to let it go. So the contents of these boxes are newly arrived in the 40% off space, and there's some good stuff here. It is not just leftovers, so let me show you what we've got here. The whole parchment and pine teapot just came in. I think that's an awfully fun piece. We have the Baccarat tennis player and the home guard bowl, a nice piece of bohemian glass, some royal gouda in the bottom, and even a 1904 Weller Pottery St. Louis World's Fair plate. Because I'm not going to be back till after the holidays, I thought it would suggest holiday colors without going too full on. And we've got pieces of spode mandarin in here. We've got quite a lot of this king's crown, these ruby flash pieces, various goblets and different size glasses just in time for holidays, so hopefully people will get some use from those. The Duncan and Miller Swan, I've always liked. That's the big one in the Pall Mall line. Nice little Westmoreland wedding box. And at the prices these are, I expect a lot of this will go pretty quickly. The vintage fashion, I've tried to put some of the things that are a little more holiday and formal forward because we are getting into that season. We restocked this space here we've got whole pottery i think the piece on the right is going to be about twenty dollars after the discount and the one on the left around thirty a bunch of things in here everything from a dresden figurine to old paris porcelain to capo de monte and this very interesting piece here which has lots of little bed vases you can't really see it well in the box but it's hard to display without hanging on the wall which is what it's meant to do so it has all these little additional little capsule vases that fit into all of these little turnings so that you hang this on the wall and put all sorts of flowers in it from the late 40s a very pretty and elaborate floral decoration we've got a cutter fur in there african baskets are a new addition we added an old General Electric iron, a really neat Art Deco waffle iron, Italian pottery from the 60s, a Pilgrim glass pitcher. So again, a whole bunch of promotional cars and models and little die cast cars. All of these have been played with, except for the ones that are in the boxes. But the prices are really great because at 40% off, we're looking at about $10 a piece on the little die cast and about 15 on these rat rods. Brought in some new iron stone. I thought that resetting this to make it look a little bit more like a serving piece might help sell the piece of furniture, which is inexpensive now, under $200. I think these folding candle wall candle pieces are interesting. The Hager rooster ended up here along with a piece of Louis glass. So again, I put some of my fresh and brand new and good stuff in here. This is cop glass from the 1930s. Little piece of Watt pottery. I put a bunch of die casts, some better quality in here with the holidays. Those are the types of things that'll sell. A couple of pieces of black amethyst, including this deco ice bucket, which $35 less 40% is only $21. So I think someone will have a lot of fun with that. 
restocked and redid the Western case. Still have some good Western pieces, including some good baskets at really good prices now. This is a neat piece here, this Sign California Coast scene. We have Doolittle print is in here. Again, with the discount, this is going to come down to somewhere around $150. A mirror and a neat Western paint by number in there. Lots of these folks. All sorts of these Japanese dolls from the early 1960s, or figures, I should say. Did put in some new glass put in several pieces of silver plate, including these very nice candelabra. And it's nice that there's two sizes. Somebody might take those home for the holidays. It looks like something already sold on that shelf because that was full when I was here the other day, so we'll have to fluff that. A piece of Roseville Donatello. So again, we're trying to make sure that this stays interesting. We need to have a sale because my friend needs to get rid of she and her mother's stuff. And I need to get rid of some things too, including this big old reel to reel, which still works. I put in everything from 18th century Shakespearean books to an opium pipe and Mary Gregory glass. I just need to sell a lot of things because I have a lot of things to bring in. This place was pretty ransacked. The sales have been going pretty well so far and now there's a bunch of fresh stock, so I expect we'll have another round of people coming in to see what we've got. So if you're anywhere near Snohomish, Washington, I hope you take advantage of some of my good deals, and I'm excited to keep on bringing more. So uh, when I come back next time, I will continue to do this. Once we start to sell down a lot of the vintage fashion, then we will reset the booth and the sale will be over. So have fun while it is all on discount. And by the way, if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please do leave comments. I do eventually get to them. I am very interested in hearing what you like and what you would like to see different about this channel. Also, if you're interested in memberships, you can click the join button below if you see it, or you can look for the link in the description. We have several membership packages that include early access to video. So my second stop today is Epic Antique. I have been here the last several days for an hour or two putting things in. Today I came to clean and price and they're having a sale and something was missing from my booth. I think the store looks great. Let's take a little detour so you can see them starting to get ready for Christmas. Look at the great old Santa Claus and of course I love the pom-pom tree. They've been having a sale so they've been pretty busy today. This has a fall scene here. It's such a great mall. I always want to take more time and show you more of this. But I am, of course, on an agenda, so I'm going to just walk you through and you'll get a little of the flavor. And the Sister Mall is doing very well, too. Lander Street Marketplace, just about five minutes from here. Look at all this neat 1930s pottery. This is what I cut my teeth on early in the business, 30s, 40s, and 50s dinnerware, and I love it. And here we go. This is the revamping, revision. And the thing that's missing right where that big piece of pilchup glass is was the $1,700 bronze eagle, which sold today. I'm very pleased about that. I have the pillar candle that you folks who followed me on Thrift Battle saw in the finale. A neat piece of chalet glass on the floor with that orange ribbon through it. Why on the floor, do you ask? Well, I have really packed this place in with a lot of my best stuff. I have a new chrome table underneath the Saltarini table. That gave me a little bit of room to expose these gargoyle and irons a little bit more. Those are so amazing from about 1890. I've got a lot of Sasha Brasta. The Metlock's Mobile Chop Plate, I think, is the last I have in my inventory. The masks are all Congolese, and they're earlier colonial era. That is a Sasha Brastoff tortilla warmer, a very hard thing to find, and some other pieces of his. I sold a piece of Sinnenstricker today. I brought in everything Seattle World's Fair that I had, including this neat pennant that's, that's covered up just a little bit here. The good thing is it means people have been looking at the display. So there's that. This face I really love. This is Pilgrim Glass. It is 1980s, late 80s, with this absolute 
bright yellow with the cobalt threading. Neat piece. This is a great piece. This is Seguso. The Pilgrim piece is priced at 89 The Seguso piece is priced at 450 It's a beautiful piece. The Portuguese roosters had to come, as did Re Munoz. I just sold a couple of Re Munoz a month or two ago here for good money. And I brought this really great Empoli ewer that I found in Indiana. Same place I found this, the African tiered server from the 50s. These little pixies are so great. These are Grant Howard. They're from about 2000 and they're based on the Holt Howard lines, but they're just for fun. Optomistic and Natalie attired and Devil May Care. They all have their names. I've got them priced as the set. We're going to go in here now. Curtis Jaray. Zulu Masks, another Re Munoz. Also Curtis Jure. I've had this piece for a while. It's just got to find the right place that has a really deep wall for it because of that net on the back. I have a ship in the bottle and the Treasure Craft Drummer as seen on the cover of my book. Seattle World's Fair stuff, lots of cameras, some nice bright Blanco and Viking glass to kick it up, and cocktail. I bring a lot of cocktail in here because it does very well here. A lot of people entertain over the holidays. So you'll see a whole bunch on another table that I did as well. Cute TV lamp. I have a couple of TV lamps in stock. I have a lot of ashtrays and smoking stuff. People love to collect it, even though a lot of people don't do that anymore. The green bowl is Blanco. Still have this big drum, the skin drum. And this is a Picasso print here. And then we back up, you can see the World War II telescope, which I had an offer on at the Portland uh, Row City Antique Show. So maybe that'll sell. I told them I was bringing it here because they, it was another dealer. They saw it right at the end of the show. So they took information and hopefully we'll move that along. This piece I think we're going to move along to. I had an offer on it, which I accepted. This is a beautiful statue. This is Sundown Harvest. It is painted bronze. And I'll just let you read the inscription. I have her priced at $3,250 because this artist is selling in that range. After selling an expensive bronze today, I'm feeling very much more optimistic about selling this one. The Dorothy Kindell figures, you have the male there and the female on the other side. Waterford glass stems here. I really like this cased in poly. It really makes the color pop. So I've got that piece. I have this piece here. And then I have a cased piece of Orifors as well, a cocktail pitcher. Like I said, a lot more cocktail. Sets of glasses, table dishes and lighters, a Sasha Brostoff ballerina pitcher. That's worth about $195. Just a little bit of boudoir flavor in here. And this really neat Italian silk scarf is next to this plaid decanter and a whole set of Vernon's Hawaiian coral. This is a 1950s pattern done on their 1930s designs. Hawaiian coral is a great pattern, good colors, lots of fun. It's got great shapes, but it's still informal. And I have pretty much a whole set here for somebody and they could have it for around $300. The extra pictures are going to cost a little extra, though. Bunch of architectural drawings from about 1890. The book was loose, but people like buying them individually. Another sculpture here. And then Seattle ephemera. I tried to bring in a bunch. I've got a bunch of World's Fair here. I get collections, keep what I want for myself, and then send on the rest. And then behind is Boeing paper, including something on Boeing airplanes. So hopefully that'll get some play. I left some Native American. I took out the African. I thought it was confusing people to have both together. So a more tight and select grouping of items that are Native American in one place rather than mixing, I think will help sales. More Sasha Bras stuff. And a very cool crackle glass Italian fish wine bottle. That's Venetian. 
I've decided this is where the Lane TV lamp is going to sit while it waits to sell. Just got this little end table from the sale in West Seattle today. And then there's hats and scales, and I just really have tried to put a big variety here. I'm putting this Rickwood ball vase in here, along with some other contemporary pottery. More sculpture, Italian whimsy, even an umbrella. And yes, I know they say opening an umbrella indoors is bad luck, but so far my sales have been really good ever since I did it. So I think it's keeping the bad things away. <laughs> I put in a bunch of models today. More Seattle memorabilia. These are from the old Washington Hotel from about 1915 or 20. A very famous Northwest novel by Zola Ross there. And a bunch of Seattle World's Fair tumblers, two different types. You'll see with the solid color or you'll see satin glass. Both of these were given out at gas stations. And when you filled up, you paid a little bit extra, got the glass and collected the set. We don't see them as much in the states around here anymore. With the holidays coming, I thought car race games, baseball, football, and a xylophone just for fun. So this shelf has the whimsy. And this space, I think, is really fun. I'm excited about it. We'll see a few neat things on the way out here. The no parking sign is an old 1920s funeral sign. This dealer is having 50% off. That means only $14.50 on the Empoli glass. So I'm going to come back and shop a little bit. This is definitely a really fun mall. And dogs are welcome. Lots of dogs are welcome. Well, I'm going to go over to see Tom to take some things for him to Centralia. He's actually my neighbor at our friend Becky's Mall, Tower Avenue Antiques in Centralia. And I'm going to show you that next. But first, I've got to pick up some Department 56 collectibles that we are taking down there for him to sell. All right, it's officially called Lander Street Vintage now, and this was Pacific Galleries. It is my friend Tom's other antique mall, about five minutes from Epic. It's a great place. I showed it fairly recently, and that's a video worth checking out, and it's obviously changing and morphing because this wall wasn't like this at all, and I love this. How fun. And he's advertising the other store, which is very nice. I thought he was nuts to have two stores at first, honestly. Now that he's doing it, I get it because this place is really busy. The other place is doing very well and it gets people in an area, a district where there's a few attractions and antiques really do better if they cluster. So he's managed to do that in an urban environment, which is pretty amazing. Ooh, a genie bottle, an early one and a highlight, which is based on the game Highlight, which Floridians know. To the boys. Interesting. Anyhow, I'm getting distracted and we really have things to do. So shiny objects, you know, when you go into a place like this, it's hard not to look at the pretty glass. This is fun. Look at these Deco 80 spaces, the Deco Revival, $18 each. They're inexpensive now. They may not stay that way. Some were made in Japan, but I look for them. I look at them because Treasurecraft made some, and Hager made some, and I think the American ones at least, like this Hager here, with the silver metallic glaze, which is very 80s and was not that easy to do. I think that's going to go up in value in the long run, personally. I wondered what I sold today. Wow, that's a pile. Okay, uh, boy, got to do it right now. If your thing is antique and vintage home, Centralia, Washington is a great place to come look because this little railroad town between Seattle and Portland has become the antique trading center of the Northwest and was featured about a year ago, I believe, as the biggest antique attraction in the Northwest and one of the biggest in the country, one of the top 10 antique destinations in the United States. Cool, so this will be the new Centralia Square Antique Mall in the Admiral Building. So the name goes on, Centralia Square was the first antique mall and started here in 1986. Wow, what a great spot. 
It is so nice that this is going to be an antique mall again. It was a very successful antique mall and it got caught up in a bad real estate situation. So it's been vacant for a while and it's going to be so good to have this on this street. It is the perfect location. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. A waterproof floor. Oh, yes, this is great. Yes, and it's so nice. It's got just what you need around the edges in terms of some spaces, but you've got lots of open space to work with for display. Yeah, this is a really dynamite layout and so much space. This is great because yeah. I know there's a lot of people who would like to be selling here. And so, oh, that's wonderful. Well, congratulations. And I can't wait to come back and see it uh, probably in January. This is Centralia Washington's train depot, which was built in 1912 and rebuilt about 25 years ago. We were instrumental in that. We started a shopper's special, bringing people from Seattle and Portland here, because this is one of the few working railroad stations left in the United States, and we wanted to keep it that way. As a result, the state of Washington gave a big grant to the railroad. Don't quite understand how that arrangement was made, but they renovated the place. I've done appraisal fairs in there. And it's a great location because if you want to go antiquing and you don't want to bring your car, the antique malls are right across the street, including Tower Avenue Antiques, which is our destination today. I have the space in that window right there. I'm pretty familiar with this space because this is my contribution to Western here. Now that I sold the eagle statue for 1700 at Epic, I may take the horse statue up there next because it is not as specific as the statue on the bottom here, which is a Frederick Remington, a recent version of. That's only priced at $7.95, and that is a handsome piece, I have to say. I still have some pretty good Native American baskets. I've learned a lot having this collection. I've learned that I should have been a little more picky about condition, but I also learned that it's pretty easy to tell African and Chinese baskets apart from Native American once you handle, it's like anything, when you handle a collection, you start to get more and more understanding of how it works. For the most part, I have sifted out things that are not Native American in this case. And I like to mix some color in. So the treasure craft wagon wheel from the 50s, the hors d'oeuvre holder, the Roseville pieces, it's just a way to mix things up a little bit. This is also a treasure craft piece. I like this collage. It was done in the region in Castle Rock, Washington by a woman named Kay, who has not been identified further than that, but I really think it's put together well. It looks like something that would have been done when people were starting to collect like this in the 1970s and 80s. Here's my upstairs space. I still have work to do, so you're gonna see some gaps like this empty case and the cookie jar that needs its lid. I do have some promo cars hiding in there though. But on top here, I have this neat mesquite cabinet that I got in New York, along with a Native American paint by number. Those are harder to find. And a whole bunch of Western Native American kitsch fraternal things that I think go well in this sort of a display. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Some of my best basketry is in here, the small pieces, which are what people seem to be more interested in. I like this one that's a covered bottle. The scenic Conestoga wagon is fun too, but I've got Skookum dolls in there. Then I, going this way, am trying to get something that's a little more like a pretty dresser approach. And I am also trying to not completely bury the furniture because I have a lot of small pieces of furniture in here and this is furniture buying season. So I am hoping that some of these things are going to sell. Oh, indeed one did. Oh my goodness. That, oh boy, there was a shelf there that was mostly empty, which is a good thing because I have things in the car I was going to fill it with. So now I will get another idea. Hmm. In the meantime, there's this interesting painting of the Cardinal here. I brought in the Northern Exposure set. And just lots of things I hope people will find fun and interesting. Everything from figures of army captains, which, boy, where is that one? Ah, oh, there he is down on the floor of the Bradley and Hubbard. I did a lot of Native American and Mexican pottery and things here. I'm really trying to hit a market that I don't see other people doing in the Northwest right now with that because I seem to be selling a few hundred dollars worth of it every month here. 
This is mainly kitchenware and I tried to spice it up and brighten it up and I told a lie in a previous video. I didn't think I was leaving roses and roosters out west but a little bit of it snuck into the box anyway so it is staying here. Being a gondol seagull pattern. I have a whole bunch more of this in the car that will occupy some space under this very cool folding table set. This is a Lego Matic from 1969 uh, and you can see how the chairs fold down. This is worth about 150 for this set because a lot of people like them for RVs and things. So I'm hoping that uh, I can display it in a way where people still see it and it can go. Capo de Monte lamp. I like the applique quilt. I just think the space, I'm going to be gone probably eight weeks. I want to make sure it has enough to carry it through the holidays. I tried to match the depression glass and the stained glass together so that you really got a nice look through here and so that it keeps it bright because as you can see it's very dim outside. This is what it's like in the northwest when it's a gray overcast day. It's like being under fluorescent light. So brightening things as much as possible is really important. There's a light bulb that I need to change in here too. Re Munoz prints. You'll see several of those along with some more interesting pieces of Roseville pottery than your average. I like the bookends. Those are seed, po seed pod holders. They would store the seeds over the winter. I got a whole bunch of them in that were painted by an artist in the southwest based on various designs. Like the Royal Copenhagen mermaid. I think she's very cute. I have a few Royal Copenhagen pieces in here. I've had good luck selling those. Again we're getting to that time of year even the Franklin mint eggs where people are starting to buy things for other people and so that means things that are more familiar things like electric locomotives. I have another one of those in the car as well. New York Central there. The Bagatelle push em up came here. The church item here came here. The Trojan mirror came here along with more depression glass. So I am packing the place pretty darn full and especially now that I'm one piece of furniture short but that might give me a chance to bring something out and get it a little more air. Gonna have to think about how to do this now. That was a nice way to start the day. Next to us here is a piece that I have. This is a side-by-side -side and it is from about 1900. It's American oak. It's in pretty good shape. It's got all its shelves. I replaced the glass myself. Hello everybody. And it is priced at $2.95. There's the scene across the street. This is a very wet Monday afternoon, but there's still activity. It's so great to see it at Centralia. When I moved here, this was a ghost town. The antique industry really saved this place, and I'm so happy to have been part of it. Well, I've sure been busy in Washington State. In fact, all over the country, my antique mall spaces are just packed. So come check it out in the real world over the holidays. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.